Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. I hope all y'all had a good holiday. And yes, this video is real. It's not a trick. Realness. Basically, this is what I was hinting toward in that video I made about how the channel hit 50k. And I had this surprise. And we're going to sort of celebrate a little bit by reviewing a couple classic albums this week. Classic, if you want to use the C word. Really, I'm just picking some of my favorites that I know are kind of well known and people will be excited about if I review them because all too often I get the question, Will you review some classic albums? Review some of your favorite albums? Review some albums that you really, really love? All time favorite? Wee! Once 2012 starts, we'll get back into the recent stuff, and I've already chosen the albums that I'm going to review this week, so, you know, I'm sorry. Alright, the first album I would like to review this week is the seminal LP from Canadian rock band Godspeed You Black Emperor, Lift Your Skinny Fists Like Antennas to Heaven. If this album is not their best, it's definitely this group's most praised LP, most well-known LP in their very short and consistent discography. This album came out in the year 2000 and is a huge reason why these guys are kingpins in the genre of post-rock. But that genre label doesn't really say all that much to me since, uh, in my opinion, these guys don't really sound like any of their contemporaries. If post-rock is a genre, these guys definitely put a different spin on it. Different than your mogwais and your talk talks and your do make say thinks, your explosions in the skies, your monos, your cigarroses. Ross. If there was one artist or predecessor that I had to compare this album, compare Godspeed to in general, it would have to be the band Swans, but not like 1980s post-punk noise industrial Swans, more like the stuff during the latter half of their career, the late 90s, albums like Soundtracks for the Blind. All the rising instrumentation and sampled vocals and drones and textures on this LP really reminds me of the material on Lift Your Skinny Fists. Even though there were hints of those ideas on Godspeed's previous efforts, this album and the EP that came before it are really where these ideas got refined and tied together into these four meticulously crafted songs for the apocalypse, which all kind of come together and add up to just about 90 minutes. This album and post-rock both seem to have just something really cinematic about them by nature. This album features tons of rising crescendos and, and quiet lows and lots of reverb and atmosphere for added dramatic effect. But these are just kind of ideas that fit that post-rock blueprint that go into this album. There is so much more going on with this LP than just that. There's plenty of ambient music on here, noise, noise rock, spoken word, field recordings, and found sounds, and samples. And there's just this really strong punk fury on this album, too, in just how urgent and aggressive and just socially and politically conscious this album can be, as well as restless. And there's a really strong element of classical music on here, too. But you should not go into this record expecting, like, a symphonic rock record. That's definitely not where this is coming from. I say classical because of, of course, the pianos and the strings and the horns that show up on this album, but all of these extra sounds just come together in these highly, highly detailed layers. And these layers do add up to something that sounds a lot like a pit orchestra, but at the end of the day, this thing is still a rock album. Now, Lift Your Skinny Fists it's a highly, highly praised album. There's no doubt about that. But I would not call it an accessible 
album or an easy to listen to album by any means. Even if you are kind of going into it expecting good things. Unless you already know you love drone, you love ambient music and soundscapes, you know you love noise, and you actually have the time to sit down and listen to this thing all the way through, don't expect to be pleased as punch with this album the first go around. I could definitely understand this LP getting criticized as being maybe long-winded, kind of pretentious, maybe a little depressing too, but honestly that doesn't change the fact that I love this thing. And it's not like it's the most indulgent thing in the world. It's not like listening to Trout Mask Replica. Alright, so what's actually on here, song-wise? If you take a listen to this thing, it's gonna kind of be like partaking in an auditory experiment where all the musicians involved tried to use sound to paint an accurate picture of the beginning and the end of the world. These songs feature really exciting highs and, and tear-jerking interludes and really kind of dark, angry, sad, sad, sad lows. Thankfully, it starts off on a positive note with the title track or sort of title movement which I have been able to kind of follow along with on this map of the album that comes with the album itself. Although it is not that accurate of a map being that some songs and movements end before or after they actually say they do over here. That's whatever because this first six minutes or so of this LP is some of the most breathtaking, beautiful, and amazingly layered rock music to ever fall under the genre of post-rock. Just tons of strings, shimmering guitars, swelling horns, these really marching drums, and all these instruments just escalate and escalate and escalate. Layering and building is really where these guys have a fine-tuned strength that is often imitated but not often recreated. These guys really value and understand tension as if they're related to it or something. The builds on this thing are pretty slow. Don't expect them to go anywhere fast. I mean, these songs do go past 20 minutes sometimes, but in my opinion, Godspeed really knows how to keep the quieter sides of their builds pretty listenable and engaging with interesting sounds, lots of dynamic playing. But when it comes to the louder sides of these builds, Godspeed really knows how to prove how cohesive of a group they are and how just detail-oriented these songs are because... They're always just getting louder and more intense, just as you think these guys have reached the final apex of a build. They manage to figure out a way to just get a shade darker or a shade brighter. The size of the sounds that Godspeed plays with over the course of a build evolve, of course. But... Also, sometimes the phrases of the strings or just the horn arrangements or the guitar leads will change over the course of a build as well, upwards or downwards, which is also really nice because it adds to the evolution of the song. You're not hearing this one single phrase performed in the one single way you did at the beginning of the song at the end of the song, which is awesome because some groups will kind of slouch when it comes to adding extra instruments into their songs because it's an extra instrument. It's just kind of there to add another color, another texture. The strings, the pianos, and the horns as well, there's some glockenspiel on this LP too. All those play really pivotal roles on this album from movement to movement to movement, kind of a, a different instrument, a different sound takes the spotlight, which brings Lift Your Skinny Fists some awesome variety. As soon as Godspeed reaches a lot of the tops, the tip-tip tops of these builds that I've been talking about, sometimes, and, and it's a little formulaic, they will kind of cut its throat and just let it die really quickly and kind of transition or segue into something different. But, you know, to their credit, they always transition into something interesting or just seems like a really fluid 
on this LP, like this first movement that I've been talking about. As soon as it reaches its end, it just explodes wildly, and these kind of wailing strings are left over in the background. It kind of explodes like a firework, and the strings left over screaming are kind of like the, the, the fading and flickering smithereens left in the air as it falls to the earth. Those strings kind of develop into a drone, and then this guitar, very delicately played, introduces itself playing the melody to what seems like Amazing Grace. It's almost a cover of Amazing Grace, actually, which eventually builds itself up to be one of the most heavy and riveting versions of the song I've ever heard. All of a sudden, Godspeed just kind of breaks away with these dissonant strings kind of interrupting that song, and they just take a turn for something much darker, which makes this album feel even more like a movie for me. It's like something in the storyline had just changed, like a villain had just been introduced. A villain, something evil, something bad, because this part of the song sounds like fists clenching and teeth gnashing and bricks going through storefront windows. After that track slows down, the album goes into a pretty hefty series of, of ambient interludes and soundscapes and, and collage music. And every moment just feels really kind of vast and eerie and haunting and just uh, just like endless in terms of just its reach, its largeness. These guys make quiet music that just seems as huge as when they're being loud. It's really something that the Tim Hecker fan in me totally gets off on. In this series of ambient interludes, the most striking moment for me is when this low-voiced, pitch-shifted woman's voice starts speaking, and it seems like she is giving a sermon. The woman is talking about God, and like I said, her voice is kind of slowed down for this weird effect. There are weeping strings in there, and she's talking about dying and seeing God, seeing God in some kind of vision and, and going insane. The woman seems to be really passionate and really kind of sure about what she's saying. Toward the end of this clip that Godspeed plays, she even goes as far as to say she knows things, she can say things, she has words that, that aren't even in your Bibles yet. But the thing is, even though this woman seems kind of excited about the stuff she's saying, the way Godspeed has altered her voice and the music they're playing against what she's saying makes it seem very kind of dark and, and twisted and disturbing too. That one part of the album is something that I just cannot get out of my head. The way those strings sound, the way that woman's voice sounds, it's all very ugh, unsettling for me. Following that movement, the band pulls out another kind of slow-building rock tune that, to me, is, is one of the most twisted moments on the album. The guitars on this one really wail. The strings kind of circle around what the guitars are playing in a very repetitive way to, to kind of make this spiraling effect. And this little tiny baby glockenspiel is just swallowed in the insanity. There's a lot of material that comes after this track, including one of the band's most popular songs, which starts off with a little monologue, a little snippet from a conversation with a New Yorker talking about Coney Island, how it was the playground of the world, how people used to sleep on the beach there, and now things have changed. Even though this is a great track, I think, pretty much all the material on this album is great, it would be impossible for me to go over every single song, moment, segue, transition, interlude, all of it. Plus, I feel like, in a way, I'd be spoiling the album a little bit. Because, like I said, this is one of the most movie-like experiences I've ever had with an album. There are different movements and climaxes on here, and each one of them brings a different set of ideas and emotions to me. This album, to me, is, is equal parts uplifting and unsettling. There are plenty of beautiful moments here, but there are also spots on here that are as forlorn as a funeral march. Except this album has been created with, with such a far-reaching ambition, it's almost like Godspeed You Black Emperor is trying to play off the entire planet. Like, goodbye Earth, you had a good run, now you're burnt to a crisp because of the military-industrial complex. 
People are dead, buildings are rubble, streets are cracked, the skies are black. That's basically the attitude you'll be running into a little bit with this album. Not really an attitude I'm sure a lot of you subscribe to. I don't subscribe to it. I don't think the world is that terrible of a place. And maybe Godspeed doesn't either. If the world were that bad, why make music for it? But I personally don't have a problem with staring at the world's flaws and listening to music inspired by them. To put it simply, Lift Your Skinny Fists is an album loaded with qualities that I look for in music. Lots of ambition, great recording and sound, memorable textures, melodies and songs, some experimentation on here as well, lots of variety in terms of ideas and, and different genres of music, great playing and performance from these guys, which really enhances the more ferocious moments on here and the more fragile ones too. Interesting use of samples and sounds and, and voices too. Strong themes and concept and an interesting use of samples and, and, and voices. And as kind of an added bonus, it's all kind of tied together into these really cohesive orchestral movements that, that segue into each other really well using drones and ambient soundscapes and interludes. There is definitely a formula going on here, even if it isn't completely apparent because there is so much material to take in on this album. But still, there are enough variations on this style that Godspeed has with this record that I'm never really bored, I'm never really fed up, I'm never really tired of what's going on here. This album is just like a roller coaster for me. It brings up so many emotions within me. I know there are a lot of records out there where people will kind of attach them to certain points in their life, like, oh, I listened to this record in the, in the summer of 08. I mean, I know I do that personally, but this record, despite how long I've been listening to this thing for years and years and years, I've never really done that. All that happens when I listen to this record is I just kind of see imagery in my head of just apocalypse and just like righteousness and skylines and war and people and nature and it seems as I listen to this album more over the years that imagery just gets stronger and stronger and stronger in my head. Not only do I find this album to be incredibly beautiful but a really unique experience to me and enlightening experience personally anyway and that's pretty much my take on this thing. Cal Chuchesta. Hey everybody, Cal Chuchesta here to say the great Gatsby, you black emperor, great band, you should listen, hope you had a good holiday, forever. <laughs>